Oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm definitely going to run into the top today. I'm not qualified. <laughs> uh, my good friend, um, basically, sister, is going to do it for us. She is the Bopper Queen, and she'll tell you about her business and just have fun. I'll be around to help. And without further ado, thank okay. you, Mary. Hi. Hey, yeah. If it's not a holiday, can we actually order things from you? So, not. I'll I'll explain it. Oh. Yeah, I'll explain it. Yeah. Do you mind when she's done? You just grab my phone. Yeah. Okay. Cool. When she's done. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, I'm Miriam. I've met some of you before, and some of you are new. But it's really nice to be here to make Bobka with you. So the first thing I want to say is huge thank you to Hani and Levy who run small and seniors and put on all these programs for you. You know, you guys come to the programs and I don't even know how they pull it all off, but it's really cool and really amazing. And I'm very proud to be their friends. So yay, Hani and Levy. So today we are going to make babka. And I know that you probably have some questions. And so I will try to cover everything, but at the same time, like this is a totally interactive class. If you have any questions that I'm not answering, please, you do not have to raise your hand. Just speak up, you know, we, and just make sure you speak loud enough so everybody in the room can hear. Can everybody hear me and everybody can see me? Okay, cool. So first of all, just, um, my name is Miriam. I live here in Phoenix. I'm Hani's very close friend and I have a business. It's called Oven Fresh Chala and I sell chala and babka and other baked goods here in Phoenix. Uh, lately, I've kind of taken a little bit of a step back and I work a little less, which is honestly very nice for me. I have five little babies at home and uh, well, they're not all babies. <laughs> that would be a lot of babies at a time, but I have five little kids. And so they take up a big bulk of my time. So I kind of stepped back from my business and how I run it is I do these flash sales where every once in a while, when I say, okay, I have a free week or it's Thanksgiving or it's Hanukkah or it's the high holidays, I put in an email and I say, Hey, I have this and this available for sale. And then it's pre-order. And then you pick it up for my house, which I live across the street. That's how it works works. And if uh, uh, I think a, a few of you have put your emails in my phone already, if that's something you're interested in, just find me after the class. You can put, give me your email and I'll make sure you're added to that list. Okay. Okay, cool. So today we are going to make babka. Who here has made babka? Yeah, a bunch of you have been to this class before. So you know what you're doing. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll teach you some new things along the way that you didn't know. And we'll have a lot of fun. So in front of you, you'll see you have a ball of dough that I made earlier today, but I'm still going to show you how I make the dough in case you want to go home and make the dough on your own at any point. And Connie and Lady printed out this card with the ingredients and the instruction on how to do it on your own. Now, it's a little bit of a process to make babka. And the first time that I saw what needed to get done, I was like, no way, I'm not doing that. But then once I did it, I realized, hey, this isn't as bad as I thought. This is fun. I'm enjoying it. I love every step. Um, one of the things that brings me a lot of joy while making babka is the roots of babka. Like, I'm not just making another cake or another cookie. I'm making something that is connected to my Jewish roots. Because babka, actually, it comes from the word like babushka or bubby. And because back in Eastern Europe, the, the bubbies would be making khala and they would have some extra dough and then they would put some chocolate or some cinnamon or some raisins in it and roll it up and that would be the dessert and they would call it babka. So not only is it just a dessert, it's also a connection to all of our Jewish heritage. So it's a very special dessert to make. So we'll just jump right into it. So the first thing that you are going to need when you make your dough is sugar. And you're just going to put it right into your dough, right, right into your bowl. There's no dough yet. And then you're going to need yeast. So yeast is that secret ingredient that you need in any yeast-based dough, like okay, cinnamon. Just to clarify, yeah. Karen is doing a demo now of how she made the dough that everybody already Yeah. Did. We don't have to pay You're just, anything. right. You're just watching. So there on the screen, you're going to see what I do. How that ball of dough is formed, I'm showing you now. So you don't have to do this potchki work. I'm doing it for you. And then when it comes to like the rolling of the actual babka, that will do together after I'm done with this dough. Okay. Actually, Connie, I'm going to need two pairs of gloves when... They're right there. 
Oh, amazing. She's, she's very prepared, this woman, I'm telling you. So yeah, so the yeast is what you need to make any yeast-based dough rise. And that's again, challah, bread, sour, well, sourdough will use like a fresh yeast. But um, so here I'm gonna put the yeast right into the sugar. And the sugar actually feeds off the yeast and is what makes it come alive. So that's why you put the sugar and the, and the yeast together first. And then say it again. Yes, the yeast feeds off the sugar. Thank you. Um, and then I'm going to add the water and the water and the yeast and the sugar all together. will do something called proof. And what will happen is little bubbles will form or some life or some movement. And that will give us proof that the yeast is working and it's alive and well and will do its job later in the process, which is making the babka rise. Okay. Temperature of Room temperature going to the side of warmer, not colder. All right, everybody. So I'm just using a bottle of water. I'm gonna put one and a half cups of water. So one. Usually how I judge it is if I'm comfortable bathing an infant, that was a little too much, in that water, then I'll say, okay, this is good. But if it's too hot, okay, all right. Exactly. The heat will kill the yeast. Heat will kill the yeast and also salt will, will kill the yeast. So I always, in the recipe, there is salt because I always believe in adding salt to any baked goods, but it goes last. It always goes last because if I add it in right now, there's a very good chance that it won't work, that the yeast won't proof and it won't work. So I take the salt, I put it to the side and I don't put it in until the very last after this works its magic. So when it comes to baking yeast-based dough and this process, I, I, my saying is less is more. So, you know, like when you're making a cake, depending on what you're making, either a meringue or an angel food cake, you're like beating it and you're mixing it and you're working really hard. So in, in this process, it's less is more. There's no beater, there's no like hard mixing. I just added the water and the yeast and the sugar together. And I'm, I'm not even gonna touch it. I'm gonna let it work its magic on its own. And actually already, if you can see in the picture, there's already bubbles. Can you see that? There's a bubble there. And I actually just saw one. There's a bubble. Yeah, it's already working without me even having touched it. It's almost like a hands-off process. No, I don't mix it. I don't mix it, not yet. I'm gonna do one mix at the end. The less, the less you touch it, the better, okay? So yeah, I already see it working. And I, I mentioned this to a few of you when you first came in here that nowadays the yeast is, uh, I don't know exactly what they do to it, but it's very, very hard to mess up. So if you're using yeast from the grocery store and you're doing what I'm doing, most likely, I would say 99.999%, it's going to work. It used to be, it, years ago, it was always like the stress of like, is the yeast going to work? Oh no, my, my dough's not rising. Oh no, the yeast isn't proofing. But whatever they do now to the yeast, it, it's most likely going to work. So I'm not worried. I already see bubbles. The proof is there. This is going to rise beautifully later. So I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients now. So the next ingredient is either like margarine or butter, or I'm using oil just because it was easier for me to, um, yeah, exactly. It was easier for me to bring. Um, but when I make it, the one that you guys have, it's actually margarine, canola oil. I would not use any oil that has a strong flavor. I would not use olive oil. I, you could use, um, Avocado oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, that's all fine, yeah. But the best I would say is either butter or margarine. Um, I, use, I used, in yours, I used like the earth balance sticks from Sprouts. Do you guys know those sticks? And So it's delicious and yummy. So I add it right into the bowl, just like that. Then the next I add the eggs. And it's two whole eggs and then two egg yolks. And the egg yolks, just give it more of like a denser consistency. I'm gonna mix it up. I always mix my eggs before I add them into my bowl. Mix it in. And I also, um, in the Jewish custom, you also always check your eggs for blood because blood is not kosher. I did that at home already, but um, I would check them, make sure there's no blood, and then I can add it into my bowl. And that's another thing you very rarely will find what's there, unless it's a brown, organic, right. cage-free egg. 
But yeah, and the white eggs, you barely see it anymore. It's like you teach that lesson to your children about the blood when they're very young. I bake with my children. And every time they're looking, they're like hoping to find the blood. They're like, is there blood? Is there blood? I'm like, no, no, there's no, there's no blood. There's nothing there. That's fine. That's kosher. You can totally fine. Oh, like for um for the it's fine because it's it all fit into the egg. So you're good to go. Actually, interesting in bakeries. So when, when we bake at home, the recipe says two eggs or four eggs and you follow that recipe. But in bakeries, they, they weigh it. You know, they don't do it based on the egg because you're right. Some eggs will have two or, you know, so they weigh it in a big tub and that's how they know. But if you're just making a small quantity like this, you, you don't have to weigh it. You just judge it on the egg. Um, the next I'm gonna add the vanilla, a little bit of vanilla. Add it right in. And as you notice, I have not mixed anything in my bowl yet. I'm just adding things in. Um, excuse me. <laughs> it's also very pretty. If you can see, it's like kind of its own little design. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna drink a little bit of my water. It's a good thing I didn't use the whole bottle. All right, then it's the flour. Now, when it comes to flour, there is a you know, ingredient list and it tells you how much to use, but it could always be off by a cup or two. So my trick for flour is to add it very slowly. So I always add half first. I never add all my flour at the same time. I add half, let's see, I have two buckets, I add half. And then on top of that half is when I add the salt because at this point, sorry, <coughs> at this point, already I see a lot of proof that my yeast is alive and well. And I can take my salt and put it right on top of my flour instead of in the liquid. Because if I put it on top of my flour, it'll mix evenly into the mixture uh, way better than if I put it into the liquid. Then I take a spoon and that's when I usually have like a little bit of a bigger spoon, but this one's fine. And I mix it all together. Yes. I, I use kosher salt, but you can totally use table salt. It's whatever you have on hand. Did you put the vanilla in? I did. I did. I put the vanilla in right after the eggs. Now, I, I, my baked goods are pretty popular. People like them. And I, I'm not such a rule follower, meaning like I, I, I know a lot of other bakers are like, you have to do it like this and you have to do it like that. Like it's a science. And I do believe there's a science to it. But I also believe there's a lot of free choice. So like when you ask your question about salt, I've made it with both. And I have not noticed a difference. So maybe someone else will tell you that it does make a difference, but my experience has been salt is salt, especially once it's in the mixture, it tastes the same to me. I know, but even once, once it's in and the taste, there's, there's so much sugar in the babka that if you put a little bit more, of, oh, thank you. But you're right, the volume is different because it's, it's the thicker like crystals, 100%, you're right. So if you have a tablespoon, just lessen it a little bit it's less than a tablespoon of tea. right i actually i mean just an interesting story when i made your dough i used these earth balance sticks that have salt in them and usually i don't i use unsalted yeah. margarine right and i add my own salt so then i did the math and i saw that it was actually even besides for let's say half a teaspoon i just added that half a teaspoon and it's exactly the same because the salt was in the margarine. Okay. So does that mean you shouldn't use the salted if you're using butter? If it's salted butter, just omit the salts. Yes. If it's salted butter or salted margarine, omit the salt. Okay. Now you can see there's like a pasty um, consistency. It's still liquidy. I can't go in there with my hands yet. But then I'm gonna add the rest of my flour, leaving a little bit left because I don't wanna add everything in case it's too dense or too thick. So I'm gonna add about this much and I'm leaving a little bit left. What kind of flour do you use? All purpose. But you could also use like a bread flour or like there's like special baking flours, but I use all purpose. Um, I've used both and I, I, there's no difference for, for especially with hala. I've noticed more of a difference, but with babka, because you're layering it so much, the dough is like only a small, tiny piece of what you're experiencing when you bite into it. That it, it doesn't really matter. So I would say, yeah, sorry. I've never tried it, but I would say go ahead and try it. 
and see. You never know. Yeah, it's probably not going to be as good, but but definitely try it. Okay, that's a very good question. She asked, do I melt the butter first? The, the answer is yes, but not completely. Not till it's like a super liquid, till it's soft enough that I can knead it in. So that's how I do it. All right, so I'm gonna mix this a little bit more and now I'm gonna go in with my hands. So this is when I take my gloves. Some, some people will go in without gloves. I'm going in with gloves, just depends on your preference. I like things very clean and neat. <laughs> All right, and then this is what I'm gonna knead it. And kneading dough is basically incorporating all the ingredients using your hands in a very gentle, loving way. I, I really, I appreciate this part of the process because it's like, you're really connected to it. You're touching it, which is in a lot of recipes, you don't really have that. And I, I love this part. So how I do it is I just go in and I kind of connect the wet with the dry. And then I go as far away, as far away from me as I can, if you can see in the video, and I bring it towards me like this, okay? And then do you see my bowl is kind of going in a circular motion? I just kind of do this until um, it all comes together in a ball. And I can already tell I'm gonna need a little bit more flour, but that's fine. I'm just using what I have for now. I can, I can feel it. I'm like, oh, it's a little sticky. So you really have to kind of base it on how it feels. But do you see how fast I made a ball in like, 10 seconds. So you still are going to have to knead it a little bit more, but it does come together really fast and it's really not a sticky dough. So do you see, like, look what I have in my hands, barely anything. And it still does need more flour, but it doesn't, it doesn't stick, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go a couple more times, a couple more kneading. You use your fists like this. Okay. So you're not, you don't, you don't want to go like this. Do you guys see? I'm like trying, you don't want to do that. You want to use your fists like that, okay? I'm going to add a little bit more flour on top. And this is a little trick I do too. I put the flour on top and then I take the ball of dough and I actually turn it upside down, just like that. Then I let it sit for about a minute. And the reason why I do that, and we'll actually come to that later when we're rolling out our own dough, is I'm letting the gluten, which is, what this is, this is gluten, rest. Because the more you let it rest, then you can go back and it will knead a lot easier and it won't break. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of the dough ripping or tearing. So the more you let it rest, the less that that tear will happen. So I'm gonna give it like a minute or two, let it rest. I'm not actually gonna give it a minute or two. I'm gonna give it about a second or two. Uh, if I was at home, I'd give it more time. Um, and I'm gonna go back in and knead it again just like this. Again, I'm using my fists and I'm bringing it always towards myself until a nice ball of dough forms. And I just love how easy this is when it comes to dough. Like this recipe specifically comes together very, very easily. It's not sticky. And yeah, it's just, I mean, you can see for yourself. I didn't like, there's no magic trick here. This really is exactly how it works. And I'll come around and show you. So you can see for yourself, and that's it. And there you have it, just a beautiful like ball of dough. I'll just come around and show you guys. Not sticky at all. See, you can touch it, go ahead, it's fine. It's, I mean, okay. and you didn't have to use all the flour. No, I didn't even use all the flour, right? Which like flour do you use for holiday? You know, it's fine. Did you use that for uh, sweet holiday? Which holiday? Which do you use flour? Flour. I use all purpose. All purpose. No, for holiday. Well, what about for holiday? All purpose. You do. Yeah, I do. Could you use it for a sweet holiday? I would not. Okay, so she asked over here, "Can you use this for a sweet holiday?" I would not because it's too sweet and also too dense. Wow. It's not going to work. It really only works for. And um, I know everybody's touching it. This is just for a demonstration. No one's going to eat this afterwards. That's why I don't mind that you're touching it. So yeah, yeah. your own holiday, please only you touch it <laughs> so you can go home and enjoy it. This is, yeah, this is just for demonstration to show you what it's like so you can feel it and see how fast it came together. I probably, I'd probably need it for another minute or two if I was at home. It's like a brain. It does look like a brain. <laughs> Smooth it out. Okay. 
I'm actually going to need it for one more minute. Just like that. And then I would take it, I would cover it with like a, a towel or some plastic wrap. And I would let it rise. That's the next step. So after your dough is complete, you have to let it rise twice so the first rise is right now in the bowl not shaped i i would say it takes about an hour let it rise till double in size and then without being covered i usually cover it you can cover it with some plastic wrap or like a kitchen towel that's totally fine put it somewhere if you want it to rise faster two options either put it on top of a warm oven uh, some ovens have the proof feature you could do that or my trick, especially in the summer, is I put it in my garage <laughs> because the garage is really warm. <laughs> yeah, and it rises super fast. If I'm like in a rush and I'm like, oh my God, I need this to rise and double the time. In the garage it goes and then it's, yeah, it like will go over. It's amazing. Okay, so now I see that Fani is going around and passing out the gloves. So we are going to make the babka together. So you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out the dough from your bag. Please don't rip your bag because you're gonna need it later. So take out the dough from your bag and you're gonna put it right in the middle of your white board. Okay? I, I let it ro rise first and then I stuck it in the fridge slash freezer so that it wouldn't over rise for you guys. Okay. So um, my wooden board is an example of what your whiteboard is. It's the same thing. Okay. So I'm putting my dough right in the middle. And um, Hani actually asked me, she's like, oh, do we need extra flour to put out on the table? And I was like, you don't, because if you could feel, touch it, it's not sticky, right? So you don't need extra flour. Extra flour will just like make it not as moist and you want your babka to be really yummy and moist. So you don't need the flour. So once your dough is on your mat, you're going to take this rolling pin that Connie has, and you are going to very slowly roll out your dough till it covers the whole mat from corner to corner. You're going to do it slowly because of what I told you before. If you're fighting the dough, if you're fighting a yeast dough, it will tear and it'll rip. But if you go slow and if you start a little bit, so as an example, I'll show you. I'm starting a little, and then I'm going to take a break. Okay. And I, I always, I always use the example as, uh, you know, as people, us too, you know, we're, we're pushed to our limit at either at work or at home with our kids or our spouse or whatever. And if you kept, if you keep getting pushed, you will break. But if you take a step back and you take a two minute time out, most of the time you'll be okay. Take a, take a deep breath. Go take a shower, go take a walk. All of a sudden, your husband's not so bad. Everything's okay. <laughs> 100 percent. You're a novice, exactly. 100 percent. The more you let it sit, the easier it is for your dough to work with. Okay. So if you're rolling and you're like, oh my gosh, it's not rolling, it's tearing, talk to your neighbor, have a conversation, go take a drink of water. You're gonna be okay. Okay. Slowly, yes. Slowly, Pinky. Slowly, yeah. Okay, mine is too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, yeah. This one I can't do because it's too small. But when I made it at home, if you use a five pound bag, I can make the bread. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite parts about baking is I get to do that mitzvah every time. It's, it's really going to get there. I know you're like, is it going to work? But uh, yeah, it's really going to get very good. Very good. It's really going to get there. Okay. I want to say, I want to say something else as you all are working. Don't worry if it doesn't have perfect line size. I promise you, once it's in the pan with the chocolate, it doesn't matter. The reason why I'm telling you to put it corner to corner is because that's a good amount of circumference. But if your lines aren't perfectly straight, that does not matter. So like, if it's like, you know, a little curvatured, 
that's fine. But that's, if you want to make it perfect, that's fine too. That's great. Just and yeah, keep on going. You're doing great. That's a, can I use yours as an example? Oh, yeah. Okay, remind me your name one more time. Jones. Joan. I want to just show you what Jones look like so you can see what yours what yours can potentially look like. Yay, Joan. <laughs> okay. And and remember about the slow. And I don't know if you ever heard this, but um there's this book that i read and um it's basically like nine things for people to do to be happy and you know and one of them is slow is slow down is it's like it's such an obvious choice because we're like in this rat race and we're always running to the next thing and it's like wait a second if we just slow down life is actually so much better so it just happens right so there's a lot you can learn while making babka besides for just making of the babka okay so i'm slowly going in now i just took a two minute break going around and checking what you guys were doing and now i'm coming back and it's actually so much easier for me to roll out my dough because of that break that I took. Okay. Everybody's so uh, everybody's dough isn't sticky, right? Everyone's doing everyone's okay? Okay, good. Thank you. I did. I refrigerated it because I had made it in the morning and I wanted to have it. I didn't want it to overrise. I have, do I have, a, I, I, I actually stuck it in the freezer. <laughs> you could, you could totally freeze it. 100%. I'll, I'll walk through all those different options with you because when you make it on your own, you can freeze it. You can refrigerate it. There's so many different ways that you can protect your dough that it stays okay for a long period of time. All right, yeah. When you cover the ball, you have to moisten the... Okay, that's a good question. So when I make challah and I cover it, I always put a thin layer of oil over my challah and then I cover it. But with babka, I do not because it already has so much Okay. Uh, fat in it with the margarine and um, it doesn't need any more. If you add more oil, it's just too much oil. So I, or water, you don't need, it's such a moist yeah. dough, you don't need. With challah, I would. So I would put like a little bit of oil on the top of challah, but with, with babka, I would not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, 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 exactly. All right, who is done with that part of the babka making? Almost everybody? Okay, amazing. All right, now, as you can see from the, the recipe card, <laughs> there's an option of cinnamon or chocolate, but that's just two options. You literally can make any kind of babka you want. You can make it sweet, you can make it savory. One of my most popular products is the cheese babka, which I make on Shavuot. It's literally cheesecake inside a babka it's the best thing ever lady actually likes it chocolate cheese that's his favorite chocolate cheese. chocolate cheese yeah i make it specially for him no one else gets the chocolate cheese um so i make it like a cheesecake mixture so i'll do like cream cheese and um a little bit of sour cream egg sugar and then i literally mix it up put it in the babka a lot of it and uh, yeah it's very good so and or you can make it savory like i've heard of people doing like um cheese and like feta cheese and um spinach red onion um tomatoes mushroom like there's an unlimited amount of things you can do with the base because this base is actually not very sweet for when i make babka i make it with a five pound bag of flour and i make it with it makes 12 babkas and i use one and a half cups of sugar for the whole thing so it's not the, the the inside which is going to be our chocolate that's where the real sweetness comes the actual dough is not as sweet so you can really do it sweet or savory did you have a question no okay so 
I, I also make a cinnamon babka, but today we're doing chocolate. Hopefully everyone's okay with that. It's very good. So you can go ahead, you'll see your filling is in a little container over here. You are gonna take your filling. You can either use your hands with your glove or you can use a spoon and you are going to literally just smear it all over your dough from corner to corner um, in an even layer. A, a trick would be to do four dollops in each corner, like one, two, three, four. That way you can eat, make sure it's even instead of like, oh no, I have all my filling is on one side. Like do those four dollops and then you should be okay. And if anyone needs a little bit of extra chocolate, I for sure have, so I can come around and give you. Yeah. Uh, I would not, it will stick. I would not use the rolling pin. It will, the chocolate will stick to the rolling pin. I would use your hands or a spoon. Mm -hmm. all right, sorry. Yes, use all of it. Okay. Um, Connie, you want to go around and offer more? Just in case? Yeah, I, I have a lot of extra chocolate. So if you want more, Connie has. I personally would rather use my hands than anything. It will get it out the most. Yeah. Yeah. The hands. The hands works the best. Or your spoon. Just kind of spread it all out. If you feel like you're missing a spot, Connie will come around with a little bit more chocolate and help you fill it in. Cocoa, sugar, eggs, margarine, water. Yeah. Hershey's, Hershey's or whatever Costco has. Co uh, yeah, yeah, semi sweet. No, Hershey. Any store will have cocoa. Any store will have cocoa. Yeah. Oh, that works. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Connie, do you have any more chocolate in your thing? Oh, thanks. I'm going to help. Give me one. No, 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 no. So don't, don't, no. First of all, yeah, if a little bit of your dough is off the board, definitely don't worry about that. If your chocolate isn't at evenly done, don't worry about that. You really cannot do anything wrong. I'm going to come around and give everybody a little bit more chocolate. Okay. A little bit more. Here, let's fill in your gaps. A little bit more. You want a little bit more? Sure. Fill in your gaps. Here, fill in your gaps a little bit. There we go. End to end? Yes, as end to end as you. Did she give you a little bit more? She did. Here, you want a little bit more? You got it. Thank you. Yeah. Here, let's get you a little bit more. Thank you. And and definitely try to get it as much to the ends as possible so that when your babka is being rolled and baked, every bite that you take has a piece of chocolate in it. So definitely try to get as much to the ends as possible. Yeah. Exactly. Here. Thank you. Do you ever do the Russian way to do it where you split? Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to do it today. Yeah. So I sometimes do it, but today we're doing it. <laughs> You're way right ahead of me. <laughs> Good job, you guys. All right. Um, you can look and see mine in the screen. I just. Oh, I don't know. Okay, fine. Yeah. 
Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shmuel wants to know who's tasted the chocolate as you're working. Anyone? There's some raw eggs in there, but it's, that's fine. I think everyone will be fine. <laughs> Yeah. It'll go. Here, you can, you can just bring well, it. I in. didn't want to break it. That's all. Oh, you're not going to. It all ends up in the same place. Okay. So you're good to go. Thank you. There we go. Just spread it out a little bit more to the ends. There we go. Yeah. There we go. You're good. Yeah, spread yours out a little bit more to the end. I, a few people asking about that. I, I didn't bring my cards, but I will pass around my phone at the end. And if you want, you can put your email address in there and then you could be added to the sale. Um, I, I just, I just realized someone asked me if I have a card. I don't, but these recipe cards has my name and number on it. So you can all, what? Yeah. So in case you want to reach me, you can always, you can always call me or text me. The best way to contact me is through text though. No, I'll answer like, that's the easiest way. Two. 13. Okay. That's good. Yeah, here. Just, here. Oh. See all that thickness? Just bring oh, it over. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. There we go. You're good. You're good. I'm doing better this time than I did the first time. Well, also, it, it, the, she mentioned it, and it's true. Your hands touch it like it My heats up. Oh, yeah. the, I had and surgery, and I had this long glass on it. There we go. What about these little empty spots? It doesn't matter. Oh. If you see little empty spots within your, you know, chocolate, it won't matter. When we're we're gonna roll it up soon, it's irrelevant. No, empty spots don't matter. Yours looks great. Absolutely perfect. Do it the size That's bigger. You're fine. This is perfect. Yeah, you're doing great. That's exactly perfect. There's no Here, um, get yours over a little bit. In having too much chocolate? No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we'll give it about two minutes and then we're going to do the next step. Yeah. If yeah, if you're waiting, um, the next the next step is going to be to rolling. But if you want to prepare your pan, spray it with some Pam. So when we're ready to transfer the babka into the pan, it's all ready for you. So just take the Pam, spray it. Uh, it's pat. It's getting pat. There's like a few of them on the table. Did you guys all spray yours already? Yeah. Doing great. Here, just. just oh, oh. There we go. Yours is perfect. Thank you just for doing that. No problem. Thank you, Miriam. There we go. I'm so happy to help. Um, good. Perfect. Do you, do you uh, teach other things to people? Sure. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I could. <laughs> I, I, I'll do anything for Connie. So she asked me, I'll do it. <laughs> Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. So um, I have a bakery out of my house and I sell sporadically um, depending on when I have the time. That's a little bit funny, but that's so if you want, you can give me your email address and I'll add you to my mailing list. You can actually, you know, I thought of a better way. I'm going to announce it right now. Instead of handing out my phone after Oh, or that. Okay, that's fine. Le 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 Levy so generously offered to send me all of your email addresses to be added to my list. So he'll send them to me. Okay. Or if you want, on the card, there's my phone number. Text your email address to that phone number and then I'll add it. So instead of doing this, I can do this with the cheesecake. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's people go crazy over it. One hundred percent. It's not normal. It's so good. Is it the same size? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You have to just put the same amount. Uh, yeah. I, I always put a little bit more cheesecake, and it blows up a little bit bigger. But 
Yeah, I'm sure you have not yeah. yeah. No, people love it. The more, the better. They want like more cheese. Trader Joe's uh, flour is Mrs. Washington. I don't know who Mrs. Washington is. All right, are you ready? Okay. Now, the next step is fairly simple, but pay attention so you don't miss it because I, I can only do it once because I only have one example right over here. So what we're going to do is you are going to roll up the babka like it's a jelly roll. You're going to start from as far away from you and go towards your your body or you could start from your body and go far away from you it doesn't really matter but but you want to go as tight as you possibly can without ripping the dough so the the same trick of slow that i said before counts now and you're not you're not wrapping the plastic make sure you get your fingers underneath the dough like that no do it this way not the long way stay this way for this one, we're doing it this way, yeah. Do it this way. The way that it's facing you right now, the way, yeah, the width, the width. So you start from the top of your of your wide board, not your height board, like that. Horizontally, thank you. Okay, and I'm going towards me, that's what I'm saying. So it's whichever, whichever you want, and then you kind of roll it up. All right, and then you're going to end up with a long rope or snake or thing, whatever you want to call it, in front of you. A strudel. A strudel. Okay. I'm going to wait for you all to be done, and then we're going to we're going to discuss what happens next. We're all going to stay in this together, okay? <laughs> Can we just talk about how well you all just did there? That was beautiful. Good job. Wow, you did such a good job. That's all. It just came off so nicely. Okay. Now everybody has a knife, right? Okay. Just going to take your knife and you are going to cut it in half in the middle. Yes? Just like this. Okay. And now you have two pieces. Okay. And now you're going to place them just run on, one on top of the other, just like that. So you have two now. Right. Okay. Very good. Now you are going to, now I'm going to wait for everybody to get to that part. And then I'm going to tell you what you do next. Okay. I'm just going to give it, a, I'm going to give it another second. So cut it in half, right in the middle. Here, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come around and show you, like this. Separate them. Put them one on top. No, no, like this. On top, meaning like, like this. Yeah, next to exactly. On top, right, right there. Yep, right there. Gorgeous. Perfect. Perfect. You guys did great. Just like this. Two. You have two pieces. Put them like this. So see how it hurts like that. Yeah, like that. Hurt. Good. Good. Yeah, I know. Someone else said the same thing. I meant like um, next to each other. I know. No, you weren't the only one. <laughs> it's confusing. Good job, everybody. Okay. The next step. You ready? Move, move one a little bit out of the way, and you're gonna take one of them, and you're just gonna roll it out a little bit till it's the length of your whiteboard. Ooh, extension, yeah. And the, and go slow. Remember, go slow. And, and if you feel like it's not moving, take a break. Take a break. Take a breath. That's okay. If your chocolate's seeping out, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Eat it or just like smear it on top. Okay. Okay. And, and if you can't get it the length of the board, just get it a little longer. That the point is to just elongate it a little bit. And if you want, put it to the side and then work on the next one and come back to it. Just a little longer because we're going to roll them a little longer. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to come around and see if I can help you. Yeah. Get the fast part here. 
A, a trick, a trick to get it to, to roll will be to um, kind of squeeze the ends a bit, squeeze the ends and then roll. Try that, squeeze it a little bit and then give it a little massage. Okay. Don't, don't, we're going slow here. Don't be tearing it, okay? You're just slowly massaging the ends and then making them a little bit longer. All we're doing is elongating them a little bit, good. But if you do tear it a little bit, don't worry, you're fine. Your bot is still gonna be perfect and absolutely delicious, okay? So don't worry if you tear it, if you tore it, you're still good. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. Don't worry about, you know, can I, I'm sorry, you know what, do you mind? Can I use yours as an example again? Okay, thank you. Now, see how hers are a little longer, but they're not all the way to the end of the board. That's okay. So don't don't stress about getting them all the way like that exactly. Even if it's a little longer, that's fine. We're just elongating them a little bit. I'm doing a little. So here, let's stretch. So massage. I'm doing and then well because we have to roll. rest. So there. and I'm going to massage. Okay. Roll. Okay. Thank you. you got. It. Okay. Everyone's looked great. Good. The massage helps, guys. Yeah, Good. Over here. yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. The massage. Helps. Yeah, it kind of. Yeah, exactly. So why is my it's kind of what, narrow here? That's okay because you see it won't matter because see how it's the opposite. Yeah. So you're good to go. Okay. Good. Okay. I'll give you guys another minute and then we'll do the next step. Perfect. It's perfect. Even though this is so skinny. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, some people have a lot. You all have the same questions. I love it. So, as you notice, one of your sides are going to be a little skinnier and one of your sides are going to be a little thicker. But notice when they're next to each other, they fit in like a puzzle. And that, you know what I mean? Oh, all of a sudden it's one one square because it's e it's even to each other. Right. So you're fine. Right. It's exactly. So you're good to go. They're going to fit into each other just right. Okay. Okay. Right. Don't worry about getting them all the way to the ends. Like how I showed hers. You, this is perfect. This is this is good. That's good. You stop. Then you stop now. You're good. Just do this one a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, exactly. And then just go a little bit more. Okay. No, that's perfect. That's enough. Stretch it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do with my holla. There we go. Exactly. You got it. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your tray and you're going to turn it vertically. Okay, so it was horizontally. Now it's going to be vertical. You are going to take a knife. And now don't do it yet because I, I don't want to be misunderstood, but you're going to take a knife and you are going to cut down the middle of both of your babkas till about halfway deep. And then you're going to kind of open it with your fingers a little bit till you see some of the chocolate. Now, when I say halfway, I don't mean till here. I mean halfway of the depth. Okay. From the top. And you're going to go down and you're cutting halfway deep. All the way to the bottom. All, no, no, not all the way to the bottom. Halfway. Yes. That's okay. That's why I wanted to repeat myself. Halfway. So as you can see, see, I'm opening it with my fingers a little bit. Yes. And I'm not cutting all the way down, just halfway. So I'll come around. Yes. Yes, exactly. So you see, yes, 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 yes. Everyone's doing it right. Very good. You have your knife? Oh, you're sharing. Okay, I love it. Just like that. Exactly. And you can use your fingers to open it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very good. And you see those layers of chocolate on the inside, right, everybody? Looking good. I, I, I no, had you it. did it right. No, I didn't. I didn't. It's okay. You just have to go a little bit more. It's That's all. Right. Right. You have to go all the way to the end and cut it halfway depth. So, mm -hmm. where's the knife? Can I? 
Can I use your knife? Yeah. Um, Don't see yet. Like that. Okay. Like that. Yeah. 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 You're good. You got it. All right. Now, after you cut them halfway, we are going to twist them together. And the easiest way to twist the babka is by starting by making an X, just like that. You're just going to put your babkas into an X. In the middle. Yes, right in the middle, just an X. Very good. I'm going to wait till everybody has their X, and then we'll do the next step. And, and, and in order to do it right, keep your tray horizontal and keep the X horizontal to you. So you're not going to make an X like like a vertical. Thank you. Sorry. Keep it vertical. You're going to make your X as vertical as possible. Okay. So keep your X as vertical as, po as possible, like mine. <laughs> do it like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes, that's good. No, you're that's fine. Yes, yes, nope, it's nope. You're gonna have a very, very hard time messing this up. Very hard. Like, I don't know anyone who has messed it up. Like, yours, every single one of yours looks perfect. Exactly. Once we bake it, and we're gonna cover it with crumb and I, I promise you, you're going to serve this to someone and you're going to think about all the little things that you might have thought you did wrong. And then that person is going to be like, this is the best thing that I've ever tasted. It will not matter. The, the pan, do you see how the pan has the walls? So it will hold its shape in the pan. So don't worry about any little tiny inconsistencies you're experiencing as you're making them. None of it matter. Babka is so forgiving and that's why it's my favorite dessert. Okay, now once you have it in an X, you're just going to exit one more time on the bottom and then one more time on the top. And then that is literally a twist. No, you, you, let me see. Okay. No, you don't have to pinch it at the end. This is because yours are, are, are not like super long. Okay. But we'll, 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 we'll fix that. Okay. There we go. There we go. Now you're, let's see how you, now you're just going to exit one more time like that. And yeah. Yeah. Now you don't have to pinch it at the ends, and I'll tell you why. Because once it's in the pan, it doesn't matter. So I'm actually going to cut mine a little bit because it's a little too long. But um, I'm just going to come around and show you. You could pinch the ends a little bit if you want to, but you also can just literally pick it up and put it in your pan. Yeah, like now. Yeah. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Yes, looks gorgeous. Yes, here. Yes. Yeah. You want, I'm going to say one thing. You want the middle to pop up. So if you're trying to get it in your pan, don't make it into a boat, make it into a tent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Tent it. Don't don't boat it. Yes, like that. Uh, see. Okay. You. Yeah. So 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 I'll give you an example. Just kind of tuck it a little bit. Like that. Oh, you want to help her, especially her. This is good. Just tuck it a little bit. Thank you. No, yours is perfect. yours is looks gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes. Please take a picture of your bob because they're stunning. I don't have my camera on, but they're gorgeous. Okay. Yes. Okay, question. That's amazing. What it says what kind of cocoa would you use? Like Hershey's, like a like a semi sweet. Semi sweet, not unsweet. No, unsweet, unsweetened. Like ba like baking. Like yeah, unsweetened. No, because the sugar is what makes it sweet. It's unsweet. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I get the beauty price. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Beyond. Yes. Okay. Now, next to you, you have some crumb topping. I, I was very generous with the crumb topping. If you don't want that much, don't put on that much. If you do, put on all of it. The crumb topping. I can tell you what it is right now. It's four cups of flour to three cups of sugar to one cup of oil. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're gonna take the crumb. Yeah, but uh, yeah, 
Yeah. We'll probably have a little extra, you know, give or take. But um, one thing that's important to note is anytime in a recipe, anytime in a recipe it says margarine or oil or butter, most of the times they're interchangeable. So my crumb recipe, I use oil, but you can also use butter or margarine. It's really up to you. So yeah, you just take the crumb and put it right on top. All right. Yeah. Well, room temp. I like using room temp. Yeah. You could use chill because of the crumb. I feel like, yeah. like a pastry, more like a pastry. Yeah. I use oil, but either way, works. It works. But yes. Yum. Yeah. So let me talk to you about it next. So, Connie is gonna come around right now. So. So everyone pay attention to this part because a lot of times there's some questions here. So I'm gonna just tell you right now. So Connie's coming down to the plastic bag. You're gonna put your babka that is not baked yet into the plastic bag. And I'm gonna give you a couple different options on what you can do next, all right? So number one is you can go home and bake it. Please take it out of the plastic bag before you bake it. <laughs> Thank you. Just in case. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I tell everybody that you would be surprised. I've had a, I've had an experience where someone was like, my house smells and I'm just like, did you take off the plastic cover? So I have to say it. Bag, so uh, right. She probably was in that area. In that, I don't know what happens. It was a, it was a, it was a plastic cover over a challah that I sold. So you can go home and bake it. The, remember I told you that it needs two rises. So right now, what we're experiencing is our second rise. So by the time you get home and preheat your oven, your babka will have had its second rise and it'll be ready to bake. Okay? Yeah. By the time you get home, unless you live here, then it needs a little more time. But if you don't live here, by the time you get home, 20, 30 minutes is good. Yeah, exactly. For about... 30 okay so i'll i'll tell you so so when it comes to the baking which you'll do no matter what um everybody's oven is different i bake mine on 375 but you but that might be too hot for your oven so you really the first time is a little bit of like a guessing game yes so i'm, I'm gonna say this right now so the temperature is depending on your oven some ovens are hotter so I would say between 350 and 375. You have to kind of decide in your own oven. 350 is a good safe bet. 350 is a good safe bet. Okay. So so you're gonna bake it between 30 and 40 minutes. 30 30 is a little under, which is still delicious, and 40 is like well done. When you smell it, when you start to smell it, that means you're almost there. Okay. You'll smell it, and that you're almost there. So between 30 and 40 minutes. Now, let's say you're exhausted and you don't want to bake it tonight. You can go home and you can put it in the refrigerator and bake it tomorrow, or you can put it in the freezer and bake it anytime in the next month. Right. Yes, 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 just like that. Now, let's say you decide to put it in the fridge or, or the freezer. So let's talk about the fridge first. Do you want to bake it tomorrow? You put it in the fridge tonight in your plastic. You take it out tomorrow. You leave it in your plastic and you need to get it to come to room temperature. You cannot bake cold dough. So if it's in the fridge, it's going to be cold. So you can't just take it from the fridge and put it straight into the oven. You have to wait, I would say about two hours till it's back to room temperature and risen a little bit and then you can bake it. Now let's say you freeze the dough. That's going to take even longer because you need to get it totally defrosted then to room temperature, then risen. That's gonna take about five hours. So you have options, okay? Now, if you bake it tonight and you don't wanna eat it, but it's baked, you can put it back in the plastic and stick it in the freezer and save it for another time. You don't have to eat it right now. And I would say the shelf life is about two to three days, two, three, four days. Yes. I would just keep, I would not leave it in the refrigerator. I would just leave it on the counter. It's like a piece of bread yeah. in the plastic bag. Yes. Now I think I covered everything, but if you have a question, most likely somebody else has that question too. So say it loud enough that everybody can hear and I'll answer everybody. 
Mm. Right. I'm afraid of giving too many options because then it's like, wait, what do I do? But yes, that's an option too. So I'm going to get it out and it's going to rise while I'm in the corn. Yeah. Then I'm going to cook it and then it's going to last 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes. Oh, yes. She got it. 10 seconds, but yes, yes. Now, I, I did make some babka, um, and then you could try. And this babka I actually made on Thursday, and I froze it, and Hani defrosted it today and cut it up today. So you can freeze your babka and eat it later. <laughs> Any more questions? No? You guys, oh, yes. So after you bake it, take it out of the oven. Yes. You have to let it cool on a wire rack. So, okay, so challah, okay, challah I also bake in these pans, and I will always take it out of the pan and let it cool on a wire rack. Babka I do not because it's so messy. If you take it out of the pan, then it's just like a big mess. I just leave it in the pan, let it cool in the pan, and I keep it in the pan the whole time. So you, okay. Like the store. Yes, like the store, exactly. Okay. I'm sure it's not this size. I, I, yeah, it is the size. This is my babka. This is the same size. I gave you guys what I do. Okay. Um, <laughs> 